Welcome back to the SSSF Range Time Podcast. I am your host, Tom Davis. This is the podcast where we talk about youth shooting sports as it pertains to the Scholastic Action Shooting Program and the Scholastic Clay Target Program. Uh, it is now September, which means one thing. It is a brand new season for the SCTP and SASP. We were excited to see so many returning teams and brand new teams to the programs. And we got a couple season openers. On the SASP side, we've got the second annual Fall Classic. This is a virtual match returning September 25th through October 10th. And that's actually a virtual match shot from your home range. Um, We are treating this as a regional. So regional males will be sent out to the top three squads in each discipline for rookie, intermediate, senior, open, and collegiate divisions. Uh, Individual high overall pistol and rifle, male and female first through third with all divisions and disciplines combined. And on the SCTP side, we've got College Nationals at the Cardinal Center, October 7th through the 10th. And I should also mention we've got the Iowa Banquet for SCTP on September 25th in Brooklyn, Iowa. And with such a successful national championship last season in July, uh, we're happy to announce that the 2022 national championship events will follow the traditional schedules at uh, the Cardinal Shooting Center starting July 9th and concluding on July 16th. For the SCTP, the international disciplines are to be held on the front end of nationals, but are subject to change with that. And for the SASP, the exact schedule of the international events uh, is still being determined at this time. So we are looking forward to seeing everyone again next July in Ohio for another world record setting event. It's no surprise that the SCTP and SASP uh, enjoys an incredible amount of industry support throughout the season. Ruger is the founding partner sponsor of the SASP, and they've been a crucial sponsor uh, to the program for over five years now. In addition to being a sponsor, Ruger has very graciously included the SASP as a beneficiary of Ruger auctions with over $45,000 being raised to date. Um, For 2021, each week from September through December will feature a new Ruger firearm auction with 100% of the proceeds being donated in benefit of the SASP. Now, this auction series is filled with rare, unusual, discontinued, or one-of-kind Ruger firearms. So right now, we have two live auctions going on. If you head over to the SASP Facebook or website, you can find links to those auctions. Again, 100% of these proceeds are going back to the SASP. And again, each week, there's going to be new products up for bid on gunbroker.com. And with the new season start, I want to talk about something that's really near and dear to my heart as a former athlete. As you're getting ready for the season, don't overlook how you're going to pay for the season and pay for future seasons ahead. So today, I have a really cool interview for you, and we're going to talk about how to set your team up for success. Being on a shooting team provides our youth with valuable life skills like confidence, responsibility, and leadership. However, most of the nation's youth shooting teams have little or no funding. The Midway USA Foundation is a 501c3 public charity working to sustain and grow the shooting sports industry by providing long-term funding to thousands of these teams, probably one in your community. Learn how the Midway USA Foundation is changing the future of youth shooting sports. Visit MidwayUSAFoundation.org. All right, folks, here to celebrate the new season with me is a, a familiar voice, Mr. John Linquist of the Midway USA Foundation. John is the relationship manager at the Midway USA Foundation. We're going to talk about the new season, some, uh, some new initiatives that we're putting in place to help the teams fund their season um, throughout the year. If some of our listeners haven't listened to our previous episode together, that's episode three called Funding Forever. So go ahead and listen to that and come back to us and listen to this episode. John, introduce yourself and kind of give us a scoop as to what the Midway USA Foundation does for youth shooting sports. Sure. I'd be happy to do that. So um, I started in organized shooting sports probably around 1977 before it was really a thing. Our school had a program that taught us how to shoot air rifle and shotgun um, as part of our junior high curriculum, and and it included hunter's ed. And at the time, you know, if you think back in the 70s, hunter's ed was like brand, brand new. And it was kind of interesting because it was such a unique model going on there in Cherokee, Iowa. It was called Hawkeyes, but 
it was so unique that Field and Stream actually came in and did a four-page spread on the program trying to get other schools and other communities to pick it up. So I, I thought, to be honest, that every school was doing what we were doing, and it was very normal in that school, and that program was the biggest program that they offered. Uh, my class was 122, and for some odd reason, I want to say 77 of those kids were in Hawkeye, so it was huge. But uh, as I went into my young adulthood, I kept gravitating back to shooting sports and hunting because it was kind of built into my DNA. I'd kind of grown up with it. I kind of thought I was fairly good at it. I enjoyed it a ton. And again, I thought everybody was that way. I thought everybody had that chance, and they, and they really didn't. So as I started my professional career, um, I got to the point where I wanted to give back and do something to kind of thank the people that invested in me as mentors and stuff. And, and I started working at Pheasants Forever, and I did the shooting sports program there before I came to the foundation. And uh, Midway USA Foundation had supported my program for years, and so did Larry and Brenda Potterfield. And so going to work for them was a I'm not going to lie, it was like a dream come true. Love the place, love the people, love the mission. It's very expansive. The impact, you know, teams in all 50 states in all shooting disciplines, they provide them a platform to be successful, uh, whether it's fundraising or shooting. The teams that participate with the foundation typically um, have more funding than those that do not. And they typically grow at a faster pace. And the coaches tend to be more educated because they're getting information from not only our partners like yourself at Triple SSF, but also from the foundation because we conduct coach meetings as well. So the partnership with you folks is paramount to the success of the overall shooting sports industry. And the foundation has is, is found that if we provide them fundraising programs, that are easy to understand and easy to conduct at the local level. Um, they get some money for the immediate expenses here and now, and they get some money that goes into their own endowment for the future. And then we match that money typically at some level. And uh, that just kind of compounds the ability to raise that um, dollar amount annually. And, you know, every year they get a little bit bigger grant. And that's ultimately where we're trying to get is so that they've got the funding locked down to support the kids who traditionally couldn't afford it. Um, we take for granted that, you know, as adults, you know, you end up with a little bit of disposable income. You kind of take for granted how cool it is to learn to shoot and, and fun where there's kids who are dying to do it and they can't afford to. And we're trying to eliminate that barrier and provide them an opportunity and you and I both know it creates leadership opportunities and discipline and uh, community service. I mean, shooting sports is a tremendous platform to build the next generation of citizens that will carry on our legacy and our heritage of shooting sports in America. So we need to cultivate those kids and, and instill in them the values that we have and why what we treasure so much in, in America is so unique and a lot of them just don't know that. So shooting sports is doing a lot more than putting a kid on a target and shooting sports is developing them professionally and personally for the next step in their life. Yeah. The Midway USA foundation is such a great partner of ours. Um, I think we do great with introducing them to the shooting sports and the team aspect of it, but you guys just, are right there with us to help them keep shooting once they're introduced to the, the various sports. Yeah, it's it's a great partnership for sure. And, and we work with a lot of different organizations, but um, SCTP and SASP um, tend to be very progressive and have a, a long range vision and goal. And that suits us well because it helps us in the planning stages and we want to make sure that all of our partners, not just you folks, but all of them are successful. So the more we can see where you're headed, the more we can adapt and bob and weave to be your best partner, you know, in the industry. That's what ultimately we want to do. Yeah, I think um, the administrators in both organizations are uh, definitely speaking with each other to, you know, adapt and uh, introduce new initiatives to help grow the shooting sports grow these teams um, in a really cohesive manner together. 
Absolutely. So this season kicked off on the first. Um, as of this new season, we have a mandatory team fee of twenty dollars. Now, what we do with that, we can automatically put one hundred percent of that money back into your own team endowment account with the Midway USA Foundation, and that encourages growth of a current endowment count or to start your own a, a new endowment count can you give us kind of a over overview of, of uh, what that really accomplishes in the long term yeah so um the 20 dollar donation um that goes into their account on an annual basis what, what that's trying to do is um get teams in the habit of doing something for themselves every year because you get so busy and there's so many things going on in, in your peripheral that you kind of forget sometimes that, hey, we need to be chipping away at our own endowment every year, just like you would your 401k. You know, everybody wants to put in money in their 401k. So in, when you come to a rainy day or retirement, you've got um, a, a nest egg there available to help offset your fees. And really, the endowment accounts are doing similar things, you know, um, we match any contribution. So that $20 that goes in is going to get matched. And now imagine if it was 5,000 or 10,000 or even a thousand um, that the team is doing on an annual basis that tends to grow quickly when there's matching dollars available. And it's all invested with some really good folks from uh, Goldman Sachs returns have been great. So, on average, you know, what we're seeing is the teams that are putting something in annually are benefiting the most. They're growing the most. They have the most coaches. They're, they're engaged is the term that we use at the office, and they tend to benefit in so many different ways that we want to spread that good news to all the teams. So if every team was doing a little bit of fundraising every year, um, over time you're going to see that really benefit everyone involved at the local level. So we, we just completed our grant cycle. Um, it was just uh, this summer, and we paid out over $2.2 million to shooting teams around the country. And uh, basically it was 612 teams this cycle. Um, the payout was $2,233,000, so it averaged roughly $3,600 per team, which is amazing because I'm sure every team could use some cash. It was our largest June pay cycle to date. So we've never had a grant cycle bigger. Um, and it should impact roughly 27,000 athletes around the country. And every, every one of those kids needs some help. So we're, we're happy to see that. We're excited to see the trend continue to grow, but we're certainly not making that our, our end goal or our end game. You know, we want to continue to raise dollars that will benefit teams every month, every day, you know, every year. And uh, we can do that through a variety of ways. And we've got some cool stuff coming up. Um, I'm sure you know about some of it, but if you want to talk about those kind of things, we can cover that as well. Yeah, of course. Let's get into it. So the typical um, programs that we have are some fundraising resources uh, from the Midway USA Foundation. You guys actually provide um, a myriad of, of products that these teams can essentially uh, receive from you guys without any cost uh, to themselves and uh, just use it as like raffle items to, to raise money uh, for their team. Yeah. So we're expanding what we're doing there because it's probably one of our most popular programs. We call it product grants. They're fundraising tools and they range anywhere from guns to coolers to computer tablets, drones, um, optics. I mean, all kinds of stuff. But through the evolution of that, you know, it used to be we'd have one or two items, and I think now we're probably close to a dozen or more because we're trying to diversify the product lineup to fit any size team. So if there's a small team that can't do like a $2,000 fundraiser, we've got products for 500 bucks. If there's a team that has 100 kids on it and they want to raise 10 grand, we've got guns that you can get there with. You know, so you can assemble and pick and choose. Everything is free. Everything ships for free. Um, you basically have nine months to conduct your fundraiser. Uh, traditional teams will um, hold a raffle. I'm going to be honest. That, that tends to be the, the low-hanging fruit. 
but the ones that are really progressive are using it in conjunction with uh, developed sponsor programs locally, and we know where they're getting, you know, 20 sponsors at $250 a piece, and they're they're using these products as the fundraising tool to make that happen. So those 20 new sponsors might go in a hat for a drawing for some knives or for a, a GPS unit or whatever it is. But they're actually um, helping teams be innovative in the way they fundraise and the way they market themselves locally. So currently, you know, we've got some guns from Browning and Glock and CZ USA and Italian Firearm Group. Um, we've got coolers from Big Frig. So, John, yeah. let's let's say the teams want to maybe even blend those two strategies that you mentioned. Uh-huh. How many products can they have uh, out at one time from you guys? So the internal rule, and everything is flexible, but the internal rule is three of each item. So if we've got a dozen items out there, theoretically, they could take, you know, 36 items if they wanted to. We're cautious when we do those things because we don't want to set them up for failure. We want them to have a plan on, hey, what are you going to do? But there have been some big schools out there and some colleges who have big alumni associations that will come in and do it and turn it around. And, you know, they're, they're turning in serious money for their endowment accounts. And as you know, some teams have over a million dollars and some teams have 200 bucks in their endowment. So they're really all over the board. But, um, you know, the firearms industry is stepping up. Uh, More and more manufacturers are offering products to us at a deeply discounted price or even donated, and we pass that along, obviously, to the teams. Um, We're trying to change up our our products as quickly as possible, so we're um, not going to have the same item up there for weeks and weeks and weeks. We're going to post it, go through it, and move on to the next thing and we're going to keep a fresh look on our fundraising page so that teams should come back and check it monthly at least and see what's new. And uh, we've got some really fun items up there that are hard to get, like the Zero S1 trainers for your trap team. Uh, That's been a high-demand item. Um, we got some mech throwers on there right now. I think there's teams with love, a new thrower, um, reloaders. Uh, There's also teams that – can't find ammo mm-hmm. and maybe they could teach kids how to reload and use those for practice and that kind of thing. So there's a variety of stuff for a variety of reasons and it's going to continue to expand um, because what we're seeing is more participation. And that's really what we're after is the more teams that utilize these tools and benefit from it, the happier we are. So that's why we're working hard to bring in new items. Well, you know, there's so much to be thankful for, for you guys, but Thank you again uh, for being such a great partner and such a great resource to these teams. Um, So if if you guys want to check that out, head over to the Midway USA Foundation website. Uh, Under the fundraising tab, you'll see fundraising products. John, what other um, opportunities do they have uh, to fundraise? Well, we currently have a monthly match for 2021. Um, The average month is $160,000. So whatever comes in that month gets divided up amongst that 160 grand and that's what match you get and ironically it's been over one to one uh, monthly so that's a good thing you know for every dollar a team puts in they're getting roughly more than a dollar into their own endowment account right now in september um, we're hosting our online donation drive and we've got a match of two hundred thousand dollars for september so it's more because we anticipate uh, more participation and donations this month So basically a team can work with families or friends or boosters or donors of their team. If they go online and donate to their team endowment account, um, that gets matched, goes directly into their endowment account. But we also have some fun rewards um, for the teams that are doing a great job. So um, there's five shooting teams bringing in donations that will be awarded. So the highest level, if you're a first place team, you get a bonus $8,000 into your endowment. Second place is getting six. Third gets $4,000. Fourth gets $3,000. And fifth gets $2,000. And that's just an incentive to get them to go out and, and be competitive and get those juices flowing and try to raise some money. But then we're also going to give 12 teams a, a bonus $1,000 just as a random draw. So if you're a smaller team and you 
and you can't go out and raise and compete with those bigger teams, that's that's fine. We're still going to be drawing some bonus money, and that all goes into your endowment. So it's kind of a cool thing. We're going to give away about $35,000 in total on that one promotion. Plus, we've got $200,000 this month in match. So it typically is one of our better months of the year, and uh, it's a great way to kick off the fall, you know, to get some fundraiser going while the kids are back in school and everything else. So. So there are so many opportunities there year round with you guys. There is no reason not to take a look at what Midway USA Foundation has to offer currently uh, and really year round build that account. Um, If not for your current uh, roster of athletes, but for the future generations that come in and really create a very prosperous, healthy team going forward. Right, right. And we're, and we're really trying to develop the calendar so that there's something going on all the time. And our biggest fear is that it gets confusing to our constituents, but we really want to make sure we're fitting the niches where they need to be. We're going to be doing a, um, a sporting clay shoot down at Talladega, Alabama, at the CMP Shooting Park in November. That's something new for us. We're going to take in 30 teams and uh, four-man teams, basically, if you've never been to that shooting park, it's state of the art. It's going to be held in conjunction with the Talladega 600 right there on the property. So there'll be a lot of rifle and pistol shooters there, but our, our shoot, we have an entry fee of $1,200 per team, but hundred percent of that goes into the endowment of your choice and we match it and there's a sweepstakes tied to it. So again, we're, we're trying to encourage teams to maybe go up and down main street and get three or four sponsors to, pony up some money, come and shoot with us for the day. All that money goes into your endowment account and you have a good time and a little camaraderie. And it is a very nice facility. Uh, We're having Dave Miller from CZ USA is going to come in and do some exhibition shooting and have a little fun with everybody. And we've got some shooting games. We've got a long bird and uh, we've got a wobble. Um, It's going to be a lot of fun and some cool prizes lined up for that stuff. And then the following Tuesday, which is literally only, you know, three, four days away, is Giving Tuesday. And that's arguably our our biggest day of fundraising at the foundation. So teams can talk to anybody locally. Uh, some of them have donors. Some of them have foundations locally. Some of them have businesses. And we've got $200,000 set aside for match that one day. And we've got incentives for the top five teams um, thousands of dollars were given away. Like first place gets an extra five grand and fifth gets an extra thousand. And then 10 more teams will get $500 each on a random draw. So we're, we're doing things to kind of fit, you know, again, all those different niches. And then the teams that succeed on a annual basis that are really after it, we've got our annual rock star competition, which has been really well received. And there's teams that are buying for that top, five spots kind of a thing. And they want to get the bonus money, which there's uh, 15 grand up for grabs on the first place and 12 and a half on the second and on down the line. But what's really kind of fun is every member of those teams will get a patch for their shooting vest or their shooting bag or their gun case, whatever that says they're one of the top fundraising teams in the country. So we have got a bronze level, a silver level and a gold level. And uh, the bronze level is five grand, silver is fifteen, and the uh, the gold is twenty five thousand. And I gotta brag because the local kids here in my small town, they they were uh, a top five team last year, so they got the gold patches, and uh, they got the bonus money for being one of the top five teams. And I think that team is usually around forty to fifty kids, sixty kids on a good year, but they just kind of started working with the local. Um, groups, you know, like, um, well, the Pheasants River chapter here, the Sportsman Club, you know, they've got some businesses that support their shooting team, and they just kept pooling all the money and taking advantage of all these special offers throughout the course of the year. And then when they got to the end of the year, they, you know, they were, um, I want to say it was like around twenty seven dollars or $28,000 they raised and didn't even really realize that they were climbing the ladder that quickly. But the kids all had the patches. They wear them like a badge of honor, like a Letterman jacket deal. And it's super cool to see um, the kids wearing those patches when you go to a shoot and say, you know, they were a part of something bigger 
in the future than themselves. And so we're, we're pretty proud of that. Right. And you probably not only, you know, see the successes of uh, such a incredible fundraising effort, but also the camaraderie, as you said, it's kind of pulling the team a little closer together, you know, building those bonds. Absolutely. It is cool. Um, I know here locally, one of the coaches, I was just talking to him a couple weeks ago, and he said, you know, when those kids go to a shoot, they're shooting against themselves. They're high-fiving the competitors. They're hanging out with their with their rotation of kids, you know, in their five-man squad. They're, they're like best friends at school. They're best friends on the range. They're hanging out with other teams when they go to nationals or state or whatever it is. I think that's awesome because they don't look at it like a typical football squad would look at it, you know, where they're – they're there to grind it out against the competitor. Shooting sports, you're trying to elevate and lift everybody around you to be their absolute best, including yourself. But you're shooting against yourself, trying to improve every meet time and time again. I just think that's a characteristic and a personal thing that they should be very proud of. Exactly. How many times have you been out on the range and you've heard someone say, oh, I forgot this and you know, two or three people immediately come rushing up here. Use mine. Use mine. Here's some ammo. Totally. I see that a lot with, uh, it could be shooting glasses or hearing protection or whatever, even a, even a shell pouch, you know, whatever it is. Um, it's pretty cool. And you'll see multiple kids pile into a side by side, all wearing different team uniforms and they're running around to get ice cream or whatever it is. Uh, it's pretty awesome to see the camaraderie. So John, I know we've we've gone over some uh some really exciting ways to help build an account and we've kind of you've given some examples of really successful teams. What do you say to a brand new team uh who's just getting established, maybe only three or four athletes, they've got one competitive squad, maybe an assistant coach? How would you what's your advice to help them get started and build that uh Midway USA Foundation endowment account? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, there's a a few different things that I would suggest. And one is get, let the parents that want to be involved, let them be involved, get them, get them a chance to participate because a lot of their kids are going to be there for four or more years, you know, offer up some training for them. You know, there's always trainings going on. You guys have a wonderful online training program, help them get plugged into that. So they, they teach themselves how to be better coaches, have them reach out to the foundation um, we've got program managers now that are remote around the country. Um, they may be able to swing by and talk to your team itself or, or jump on a webinar, Zoom call or whatever, and have a conversation with the entire team. Um, we will help you set up an endowment account for free. Uh, we'll provide you fundraising tools for free, and that's a lot of times a limiting factor is money. Um, we'll help you kind of get a plan together of what our calendar of promotions looks like so you can take advantage of the biggest opportunities that fit your needs. And over time, as you financially become more stable and the kids are having fun, you know, the attrition rate will typically click up as kids around them start to see, well, that looks like fun. And I didn't break my knee doing it, you know, and I didn't get a concussion, uh, you know, all those kind of things. Shooting sports is, uh, level playing field for everybody. Anybody can participate. doesn't matter if you're boy or girl, short or tall, fast or slow. If you put in the work, you can uh, build yourself a great reputation and be successful. So that's kind of what we want to do is help get you on that path to the, the success. And we've got people internally that can help you, and we have people externally in, in remote parts of the country that will help you. Our biggest hope is that you reach out and have that dialogue with us because we know we can help you. Um, we had some tremendous things happen this year that we did not see coming, uh, one of which was a two-to-one match that happened at your nationals. Uh, man, what a cool thing that was, and it was widely successful. Um, and that's Larry and Brenda Potterfield being generous. And we can't tell you when those things will happen because we don't have those conversations with them daily, obviously, but when they have the opportunity to do something that's going to be impactful, they typically step up and do it. And that's where we want to be there to kind of help um, guide those teams through the best methods of fundraising. So does that make sense? 
That makes sense. And, you know, you mentioned Larry and Brenda. I mean, it's it's yeah. hard to come up with another family name that has contributed as much to youth shooting sports as they have. And they're two of the best people you will ever meet. I mean, they're just genuine, good people who are trying to help everybody. And it's such a rare commodity to see somebody give at that level today. Um, The industry is watching. They're taking note. Um, The conversations I have with them are, you know, we need to do our share here too. We need to start picking that up and do a little bit more for you shooting sports. That's what we want to hear. It's just been improving every year. Every conversation gets a little bit better and they see Larry and Brenda at the events, which is amazing. Um, and I encourage anybody that sees them at those events, go up and introduce yourself, you know, tell them where you're from, introduce your athletes. They're there because they want to meet people and see the kids shooting, you know, so take full advantage. They're, they're approachable people. They're down to earth and, uh, they'll love to meet them. So, we're blessed to have them, you know, start the foundation and, and uh, be big donors for us as well. And we can pass that along to the teams in a thoughtful way to benefit the teams. So there's always something coming. Be prepared. Well, John, thank you so much for everything you do throughout the year. I know you guys work tirelessly to help teams and future teams. And youth shooting sports has such a bright future. And that is largely due to the efforts of the Midway USA Foundation. It's a great organization. I wish I would have found it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, thank you so much for hopping on the podcast. You know, wishing luck to all the current and new teams uh, getting established this new season. Yep, best of luck in the competition. But take a moment and look around and enjoy your surroundings because it's a special moment in time right now. All right, listeners, I am here with a current SETP athlete, Miss Caitlin Koenig of Jacksonville University. Uh, Caitlin, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Appreciate your time. Well, thank you very much for having me, Mr. Davis. I'm super excited to be here. Little background on me. Like you mentioned, my name is Caitlin Koenig. I have been a member of SETP for about six years now. I'm a third year honor student at Jacksonville University. And I'm also one of the elected co-captains for the JU varsity shooting team. Well, congratulations. Now, where'd you, where'd you come from? Uh, are you a Florida resident? No, sir. I am from Phoenix, Arizona. I started shooting through the SETP program at my local gun club, Ben Avery, right in Phoenix. Ah, nice. That is a uh, really famous team out of Arizona. Yes, sir. We have a good turnout of a lot of suits. So we've got college nationals SCTB college nationals at the cardinal shooting center coming up uh october october 7th through the 10th uh, i understand that you guys are sending a squad there yes sir we are bringing about five to ten people this year i do not believe that we have been before in the past so we've been preparing and we are very excited to make our appearance at nationals in ohio next month awesome so i want to ask what are uh What kind of things are you guys working on uh, in preparation for a larger event like this? So the biggest thing that the JU shooting team focuses on making sure that we have a plan when we're shooting, whether it's competitively at a tournament or if we're just training, we always prepare mentally. This includes having a very strong pre-shot routine, and we're always going to be having a competitive mindset. When we are practicing, we are practicing like we're competing because that's just one of our big things. That's what we like to do. And like I mentioned, we always have a plan. So we're going out there and we know what we're going to work on, what our weaknesses are and what our strengths are. Also, one of the big things that we do every week is as a team, we do scored rounds for trap, heat and sporting plays. We shoot 50 of each and we score them just as if it was a tournament. So it really gets us into the competitive mindset that being in a competition really would as well. Do practices kind of are they structured like practices or they're more uh, structured like an actual shoot? It sounds like. There's a little bit of both. We, like I had mentioned, we do our scored rounds, but then once you know, okay, I need to work on specifically this station of heat or this specific burden sporting plays, we have the freedom to get with our captains, get with our coaches, get with our head coach and really focus and kind of solidify what we need to work on and 
really do our best and better ourselves both like competitively, mentally, all of the above. So as, as co-captain, what's your role in all of this? So my role, the captains, there are two co-captains and then we have students that are also coaches and then we have our head coach. So there's five of us between the captains and coaches and we work very closely to get the team prepared, make sure everyone has a plan, everyone knows what they're doing. We deal with our squatting, we deal with our practices. All of us are at every practice helping out those that kind of need more help or even those that just need a little tweak here and there. And we have our weekly meetings as well. So the captains and coaches put together how the team's doing, what we need to work on, and how to better ourselves each and every day. And one other thing that our program specifically does is it supports us to shoot NSSA, NSCA, and ATA tournaments year-round. Even if the team isn't going to something, if you're interested in it, you are more than welcome to go, get a squad together, do your thing, and the team will fully support it. So I think that also makes us very unique in that asset, and it allows us to, like I mentioned before, keep that competitive mindset at all times. So even if there isn't a collegiate tournament around the corner, we're always got something going on and we're always shooting something. Is there anything that Jacksonville University does, um, I guess, for like match fees or ammunition? Is there anything like that that you guys provide? So every year, each athlete pays their yearly dues. And our coach, Dave Dobson, he does an insane amount of fundraising. And we also get money from the Midway USA Foundation. So we do pay our yearly dues. And then from that point on, all of our targets, our ammo, our entry fees, that's all provided for us. So once you pay your dues, you don't really have to worry about that. That's awesome. Yeah, you can just concentrate on what you need to do. Exactly. Our coach has done a really great job at fundraising for the team. We do a Christmas clay tournament at Jacksonville Gun Club to kind of fundraise for us as well. So we are constantly on the lookout, really just raising money to make our team the best that we possibly can and provide us with the resources to our to make us the best that we can be. Well, I'm down in Gainesville, so maybe I'll come up for that. Um, I can't promise that I'll do very well, but I will come support you guys. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be very appreciated. Bring it back. I mean, how did you get started with uh, competitive shooting? So I grew up just shooting for fun with my dad out at the gun club. And then I heard about this program, SCTP, and got going to practices, and I kind of just started rolling there, and I absolutely fell in love with it. So I'm very grateful that SCTP allowed me to have that branch between doing it something with my doing it as something with my dad, and now I'm competing at a collegiate level, and I absolutely love it. Oh, that's so cool! Um, Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I kn- I know that you were at nationals uh, this year. Uh, in the collegiate division? Yes, sir. This past summer at Nationals, I saw it very well, and I was very happy with my scores. I ended up placing second in the ladies' collegiate sporting clays division, and I also placed in seat as well. So our team overall did very well, and personally, I'm very happy with my performance. Well, way to go. Um, What kind of goals did you guys have going into the event? So our number one goal is we obviously want to shoot well and shoot the best of our ability, but we also want to make sure that we're having a good time while doing it. It's a really big thing on our team and personally for myself that I've noticed if I'm shooting well, I'm having a good time. And if I'm having a good time, I'm shooting well. It goes kind of hand in hand. And I think it's really important to make sure that you're having fun doing it while you're also doing or shooting to your best ability. I think that's a good segue. You know, I want to ask what kind of advice you might have for, you know, that high school junior, high school senior who is looking to shoot in college. What kind of advice do you have for them kind of looking back uh, on, on your experience in college? So deciding where I wanted to go to college was a very big decision for me, deciding that I wanted to go to Florida all the way from Arizona. And it took me quite a while. It was a lot of pros and cons list. And personally, it was all just came down to what would benefit me best, both academically and while I would be able to continue doing what I love with my shooting career. I want to say the biggest piece of advice would be find somewhere where you're able to balance both and you're able to absolutely love both things that you're doing. You want to find a place that works best for you personally. Some places work better for others. And I would just really keep that in mind. 
but linking back to what I said before, it's important to make sure that you're having fun doing it. The special thing about Jackson University's team is that our team is extremely closely knit. We aren't just friends on the field. We are friends both on the field and off, and off the field. So it's a very like healthy environment that I genuinely absolutely love being in. Uh, I know that you guys just weren't there to compete at SCTP Nationals. You guys were actually there uh, at College Day. Um, you know, if if a prospective athlete student wants to talk and get more information, that's an excellent resource uh, to really get a good idea of what to expect from all these different teams when you're you're shopping for uh, a potential call uh, where to go to college. Yes, sir. So actually, ironically enough, I found out about JU shooting team going to college day when I went to SCTP Nationals in high school. I kind of college was just in the back of my head. So my mom and I went to college day and I met the team. And from that point on, I absolutely loved it. And then I went from there, I toured the school. And that kind of led me to make my decision. But I absolutely love the fact that Nationals sold that college day. Because I know even a lot of high school students, they might not be thinking about college because, oh, you think it's it's a few years away. But it really allows the SCTP athletes to get a feel for the team and kind of get the resources of what does this college have to offer. So I actually love College Day, and it really it, it made the biggest difference in my life. Was it, uh, was it kind of surreal? Uh you know, it, it a, few, was. a few years later being in, in that position on the other side of the table. It definitely was. But, I mean, one of the, like, most special feelings was when I came to JU to tour, the team remembered me from Nationals. They remembered who I was. They knew where I was from. And they knew everything about, not everything about me, but they knew a lot about me. So made me feel very welcomed. And I wasn't, like, I wasn't just another athlete that came to the table. They really made a point to remember me and remember what I was there for. So I know being on the college side of it this year, that was one of the things that we really focused on is we meet someone and we remember them. We tell them all about our program, all the special things about our program, and we remember them, hoping that they'll come to our team in for three years. That's so cool. You know, of course, we we strive to be the best shooters we can be as athletes, but um, it's the team aspect of the CTP and then you, you go on and shoot in, in uh, collegiate shooting teams, you know, it's just so rewarding. Some of those relationships that you build and, you know, a lot of them uh, end up being for life. It really is. I got to say in my personal experience, the shooting community is very one of a kind. I have met thousands or hundreds and thousands of amazing people that i might only see them twice a year but it's every single time you pick up right where you left off yeah and you know i think we're fortunate uh in this day and age that now it's you know because of social media you can really keep up with with your friends who don't live near you but you know exactly what they're up to and you know they're just a phone call away exactly it's really comforting going to tournaments traveling all over and you see some of the same people that like i mentioned you only see them a couple times a year but you see them and it's like no no time has passed well caitlin i appreciate your time thank you so much i know you're a busy college student um and you probably got practice coming up uh is there anything that you want to leave off uh to the sctp community before you go i'm good on my part i just want to say thank you one more time and i'm excited to see you all at sctp nationals next month awesome thank you caitlin see ya All right, folks, that's going to do it for this month. Uh, I want to encourage all of you to subscribe to the SSSF Range Time podcast on your favorite listening platform. Our podcast is available on over seven different listening platforms, including Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. If you're a fan of what we're doing here, please consider leaving us a review on those platforms and rating us. Well, I think you should rate us five stars, but, but go ahead and rate us, and we will see you next time on the Range Time podcast.